Hey guys, welcome to TGS. Today, we've got bio ammo. About a year and a bit ago, we went to IWA at Iwa and we saw bio ammo straight after seeing Ely and their dissolvable wad. And I remember walking onto the stand a bit like zombies going, what? And then he talked us through about half an hour and we left going, this is the future. This is amazing. This is good stuff. Bio ammo is a fully degradable shotgun cartridge. The case, the head, the primer, the wad, is entirely made of this. This is a vegetable-based plastic substitute. Is it a vegetable-based plastic? Who knows, we have a correct word. Uh, it's made of some kind of cornstarch. It is quite exciting and quite fabulous. Exciting stuff about it that we'll get into now, because just in case you don't want to watch the rest, is you can throw the case in a hedge and it will degrade completely. You know when you're out wild fowling, or that's a lie, you know when you're out pigeon shooting, you're bang with a semi-auto and it goes into the hedge and you go, I've got to go find that now, I didn't mean to shoot that. And you have to go and find it. Well, with these you don't, because these don't break down by water, but they break down the same as anything else with a mixture of sunlight, water, which causes bacteria, and it's bacteria that break these down, which is fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. There, I'm sure, will be some downsides, which we'll talk about later, but for the most part, a plastic is bad. And we can all agree that plastic is bad. Someone pointed it out to me the other day that the trousers I was wearing were gonna be around when my grandkids are, like, old. And that kind of scared me a little bit, the ability, the, the concept that I think the older you get, the more maybe you get concerned with your footprint and what world you're leaving behind. But the ability to shoot a cartridge that has plastic wad like performance whilst not also producing plastic waste in the shell seeing as the case itself is quite a hard thing to recycle well that's wonderful that is the future these guys are the future and they are now here what do they produce well they produce pretty much everything they produce game shot lead game shot steel steel shot for clays and lead shot for clays they well every shot size under the sun from in their bio ammo lux threes to tens, bio ammo steel threes to nines, um, and in their clay loads sevens to nines, and in their steel load clays sevens and nines. Literally anything, right? Literally anything. Bear in mind that steel and lead have different shot sizes. And this will bring me on to a quick annotation that I was talking about with a chap called Simon Reinhold who actually got to go and test these first uh, for a video, I believe, for Countryside Alliance, who is a much better shot than I am, who said, A, they are good, B, they kill really well, and C, agrees with me, or at least is a huge propagator of the use, not of this ridiculous number that means different things in different countries for different materials, but, for the usage of a millimetric, or putting a millimeter size on there. So everybody knows what is in there. It's not some nominal guesswork, because, you know, for example, an Italian five is half a size bigger than ours, so that would make it a five and a half here. That's confusing. If everybody just said, this five here is 2.85 millimeters, everybody would know in the world that 2.85 millimeters. Anyway. That aside, which I think is kind of important because we'll get onto in a, in a bit, that a three isn't a three isn't a three, hence a Ely three is a standard performance and these threes in a steel are a high performance. Uh, interestingly, it says high performance on this box here, but these are a standard performance cartridge, I believe. Confusing, isn't it? But they are sorting that out, so we're not gonna worry about that too much. All right. Let's cut one open and have a look before we go any deeper. Right, so we've just cut the side wall off this cartridge here, and as you can see, it's a really very long wad. This is the Lux Steel, Lux being their game load. Look at all those steel pellets, what a treat. 70 mil. Um, it's a really long wad. Let me uh, pull it out and have a look. So first things first is it's not sealed around the edges, so there we go. Well, this is interesting. So this is a very different wad to this one. This being the steel wad has no compression area, which is interesting. It just has a hard base. Cut sidewalls there, so there's, they're not heat sealed or anything. But if you look into the back of the shot cup, these cuts actually only go about halfway down. So I expect for a steel cartridge, it's actually therefore going to, where if you look at this, you have the walls cut all the way, 
it's more than likely going to throw extremely dense patterns. That's my guess, anyway. And some magical powder. Ta-da. How fast are these cartridges now looking at the powder? Well, I've done a little conversion here. Uh, BioAmmo Lux, which is a lead cartridge, 28 grams of any shot size, apparently, is their fastest, and that is 1335 feet per second. That's 407 meters per second, and it goes down to about 400 meters per second for 36 gram threes. The bio, the steel is 1330, that goes down to 400 meters per second, meters per second as well. The Biomo Rex, their clay load is 1365, and their clay load steel is 1350. It is not an inherently fast cartridge, however, all muzzle velocities need to be taken with a pinch of salt because they're all tested slightly different. So, for example, you get American cartridges with a very different speed. And even if these are comparable to UK speeds, that isn't far off what most game loads are anyway, you know, 1350 odd feet per second. So, it's not particularly slow. More importantly, one of the best cartridges I ever shot was a Noble Sport cartridge, and they were like 1,320 feet per second. And it took a while to sort of learn, relearn your, your swing through, just need to push through stuff a lot, a bit, say a bit, quite a bit more. But they used to muller clays like nothing else. There is one out of a 28 gram seven steel load. So that is very comparable to that one there. You have your little compression piece. And now let's have a little look at these, because I sort of assume they'll all be the same. Let's have a little look what what's inside here. Something that's interesting to me, apart from the fact I'm making a huge mess, is how different this plastic, I've cut open a hell of a lot of cartridges in my time, how different this plastic cuts. Like it takes a little while to get into it. It's got a really high surface tension. Once you're in it, it cuts really nicely, like harder and more, I don't know, denser perhaps than the, the plastic casings. There we go, have a little look at that. So we've got a slightly different wad, again, by the look of it, and that's either a, a slightly different make. You can see it's a strange sort of color mixture in these. Something, talking of color, something strange about the BioAmmo material is that it doesn't take different colors very well. So it's not like you're gonna get a elaborate, flashy, and exciting colors on your cases or your wads, clearly. That's really interesting that you can almost see the mixture of colors on here in the wad. No idea what that entails or why that's the case. Probably just because it looks cool. Um, so there's a limit to what colours this plastic substitute can take without losing all of the benefits or a lot of the, the pros of it, apparently, without ruining the polymer. Because I'm a boy and inherently curious, I'm intrigued to see how it reacts under light. And the answer is it melts just like plastic. And it smells completely different to plastic, and that's probably no real benefit. You know, very low melting temperature by comparison to a cartridge. I wanna have, I have no idea what that means, it doesn't get that hot inside of a gun, and looking at this wad here, it's not like it's stretched at all or burnt on the back where there's a huge fire that goes up behind it. So, anyway, interesting, completely unscientific test over. How much do they cost? Let's have a quick look at how much they cost before we go out. Well, here is the downside is that well, it's not a downside. Let's talk about the good stuff first. The good stuff is that the Lux lead in a 32 gram five is 423 quid. That is very, very comparable to a non-biodegradable shell from a premium UK manufacturer. By the way, I really like buying cartridges made in the UK. However, most of them are made with foreign components. So it's nice to support the British industry and I'd rather buy these if they were made in England but they're not, so there. Um, the 34 gram four in a Lux lead is 448 pounds, so it's a little bit of money, and the 30 gram of six is under 400 quid per thousand, per thousand. Obviously, the rates on smaller quantities will be better. The steels in a 32 gram three are 392 pounds, so pretty much the same price. Interesting that the lead and the steels are just a little bit less, which is quite nice because it probably accounts just for the component price, seeing as the cases are evidently a bit different. Uh, the case is the same and the wads are just a little bit different. Interesting. Where it gets bad is, that's not bad is it? I personally think there is no excuse not to shoot then biodegradable wads at that price by the way. I think that that is one huge barrier taken out of the way. Interesting that the clay cartridges are actually significantly more expensive. The UK loves cheap clay shells. There's very few people like spending out on the slightly better stuff, the significantly better stuff for a little bit less money. For example, 
a cheap clay load is 200 pound a thousand. The cheapest clay load on here is 330, and that is a 24 gram seven and a half. That in a 28 gram seven in a Rex steel is 300 pound a thousand. I think the clay loads are probably too much for you. I'd love people to let me know. I would shoot them. I would have no problem shooting. Given you go out and shoot 100 at a time, the increase of an extra, let's say I, I shoot white gold, so to go from white gold to the steel loads an extra 80 pounds a thousand, it's an eight or eight pounds a round. Would I do that to reduce my plastic usage and be able to use a plastic wad performance cartridge? Not that it really makes much of a difference. Yeah, I think I probably would actually. Um, I think personally, I, I count myself as a conservationist, environmentalist, I really like these kind of things and I work hard and strive hard to make my life better for all of these things. I think removing the usage of large quantities of plastic, which is about the only time that I don't think about plastic usage, wouldn't be a bad thing at all for a couple of quid. How you feel about that, let me know in the comments. All right, so we've made a mess. We've had a look at some cartridges. Let us go and shoot it a bit of paper. I'm out of pattern boards, by the way. So we're gonna just be shooting for evenness of patterns on shoot and see targets. Before I go and test, I just picked up this wad to have a look at it. This is the wad at the steel shot seven and a half. So I put some shot back in it. Interestingly, you have quite large slits in the side. Um, I remember Ely getting berated for having small slits in the side of their eco wad. Um, and I don't think anyone's really picked up on this yet because again, from tests we have done that you should go and check out, this super duper soft iron, it shouldn't be damaging the good quality steel of your shotgun barrels, theoretically. And even the smallest slit down side isn't gonna leave marks. We shot, what, high performance, super mega steel through a relatively old, relatively soft barreled gun. Well, I mean, a thick walled gun, but a relatively soft gun uh, without leaving a single mark. Not seeing a single mark, you know. It shouldn't do any damage whatsoever. And I'm just gonna say that it shouldn't do any damage whatsoever as they would not be making it. Would not be making it whatsoever. Let's go. Okay, so we're gonna pattern test at 30 meters today. And like I said, it's just to show that these guys show a thin and even pattern. Every gun shoots differently as we have established and every gun will prefer a different thing and every shooter will be looking for different results. So it's mostly just to see how they recoil. Let's um, give them a well. So we're going to be chucking them through this, which is a Maruku Mark 70 with a quarter choke in the bottom. So a first little niggle with them, first thing I dislike is, so this is a 30 gram five and this is a 28 gram seven. And it says 12, 70, which is great. But what it doesn't say is steel, um, high performance or otherwise anywhere on these cartridges, which I think could be counted as important. And I think that it could be that all gray ones are steel, but if you don't know, which I don't, I'm not gonna say. So we're gonna start with a 28 gram seven, the clay load. Let's go have a look. All right. Well, a quarter choke would smash the hell out of a clay at that distance. Nice, even pattern. No better or worse than anything else I've ever shot anyway. Here we go, here's an interesting one, the wad. I'm missing one of the petals, that's ripped off. And the rest look in fairly fine order, actually. What is interesting is that you have these tiny little pin prick holes in the outer wall of this wad. We're gonna be interested to see how the solid wad of the 30 gram five gets on with that. Might be a case of these wads need to be a touch thicker, uh, was pointed out to me. And I think that might be true. At the same time, it's not going to damage your gun barrel walls that much, but I don't, who knows? If someone wants to give me 10,000 cartridges to go and test, and the time, I'll go do it. What that does mean, obviously, by the way, is this is a lot softer than plastic. I mean, you've got all of these indentation around here. It, it doesn't sort of bounce back like plastic does, if you like. It's, it's a very different compound. Did that kick? It did kick a little bit, but not any more than any other. 28 gram, seven and a half, oh, seven. Let's fire a few more shots. All right, 
shooting it like you would a clay, these do shoot and hit a little bit harder into the shoulder than your average light clay load. Um, I suppose it's the easiest thing to say. Yeah, they're a little bit kicky, but I, I mean, I can't explain that away. It's no different to shooting a, I suppose one of those things, if you shoot something like a compact, you'll find it kicky. If you shoot something like a black gold or a white gold, that's got a little bit more of a firm kick, then it will be very, very normal to you. I'm interested to see how these 30 gram fives feel. Very different feel of recoil actually. Much more of a slow punch into the shoulder. Those 20 gram sevens are quite a snappy shot. This felt nice. It was quite a, a long, slow recoil. Manageable, very manageable. Let's go and see if we can find the wad and see what it did to that target. So I've just picked this up off the floor. This is a shotgun cartridge from some time ago that I most likely left here. There's a good reason to have bio ammo. But that is, to all intents and purposes, a good killing pattern again. Nice, even spread. I can't see any problems with that whatsoever again. Always worth patent testing your gun. But yeah, it seems a nice even spread. As I said before, and as I have a couple of good instances from people who are damn good shooters, these cartridges do kill in reality, which is really all that matters. So before we move on to the final shot, the lead, observations time. Firstly, the wads hide really well on the floor because they're brown. So trying to find them is harder than finding a white one. Secondly, the wad for the 30 gram fives where it's sealed, I tried to find the first one. So I shot another shot just in the same area, hoping we'd find the wood on the ground. And I, I can't find it. It's not making sense. Like, and all I found was a big gouge in the ground, like where something's hit and bounced off. And so I thought, I'll find one in the air. So I put my gun up at, I don't know, 70 degrees and thought, well, with the plastic wads, the petals would come out, it would slow down and it would land. With that steel load, the bio ammo, there is a hedge 150 yards that way. That wad went up, up, up into the distance. I just about caught it in the light and I watched it sail down over there. What that means for long range patterning could be very good. So we're gonna chuck a long range pattern through these 30 gram fives actually before doing the 32 gram six. 60 meter pattern, which is about stretching the effective range of these in like a three, realistically. Quarter choke. All right, so first things first, didn't have the power to knock over the board, which it did at 30 meters. Let's go have a look. That's underwhelming. I mean, you've got enough pellets on pattern there maybe to be fair, that's still enough pellets to kill a pheasant if they had enough energy, which not entirely convinced uh, certainly uh, the five would. The three might, just about, but probably not. They're definitely denser patterning than other steel ammo that I've used. Um, trying to think if there's a concern with putting those wads on your neighbor's land, if that was the case, having to watch where your boundaries are. I'd have thought legally, probably, yes, uh, but probably best to well, have that conversation with them and say, there will be some wad looking things on your land if you see them. Uh, and, well, to say that, you probably have to have a conversation about where the shot falls anyway. So, lead. We've actually stepped back a couple of yards, so it's not entirely fair, but here it goes. Different kick again, different kick again. Again, yeah, not that overly kicky at all in reality. Well, there you go. Another good pattern. Certainly good enough, you know, there's no big clumps, there's no balls, it's not strange. I mean, it'd be nice to have some pattern balls, but I'm out of stock with them, so this is good enough to sort of test the actual efficacy on target. Which, to be fair, at 30 meters, three a quarter choke, is plenty good enough. Plenty good enough. It's a nice, humane shot. Actually a little bit more dense than I'd expect for a quarter choke, but that's because it's through a plastic esh wad. Hey, what can we conclude? It is better for the environment. You can get the steel version, which is like the ultimate virtue signaling cartridge. You can get half decent long range patterns through the, these wads, clearly. Well, 
probably worth saying this, I mean, sponsored and not endorsed in any way by these guys, but I just love the progressive edge. As I showed earlier, finding those cartridges, you'll never find all of the cartridges. So being able to find the cartridges, or to be able to just go, clunk, oh well, give it some time and they will disappear, it's no different to throwing a banana peel in a hedge. Bad example, but no, no, no different to throwing your apple core in the hedge. Little different, but you know, there's no microplastics, there's no big plastics. It's not going to degrade, degrade into plastic dust. It's not just going to sit there eternally. And you know, when people find old shotgun shells in a hedge, it doesn't do any favours for our community. And like I said, you're not going to find them all, but the ability to not have to find them all, now that is really nice. So what is the actual takeaway? Well, that's down to you, isn't it? Personally, for me, I'm impressed enough that I'm going to buy some of these, both in steel and probably only in steel, and go and shoot them during in the season at pheasants. Because the bottom line is if they kill well, which they do, because, as I've said, people who are vastly better than me have shot very well with them with great results, well, there's no reason not to use them. And I'm sure I'm going to upset the English cartridge man, man <laughs> I was the mafia, the manufacturers at this point, but these guys have set a very high bar. I'm hoping some people will catch up. So thank you very much for watching. Our final thing for today is I'm going to chuck these empties behind this tree and I'm going to keep a track on them. Probably not the best spot behind a tree, but it's a realistic spot where you throw an empty. Let's have a look and I'll see you soon.